A lot of people fail as a trader or quit trading due to poor indicator combinations or using indicators that only tell what has already happened in the market. So in today's video, I will be showing you this new trading strategy on TradingView that works like magic. So make sure you watch till the end and give a thumbs up if you learned something new today. For those of you that keep asking, the trading platform I'm using is TradingView.com. Once you get to TradingView, under the Euro Japanese Yen, and I'll be using the 5 minute time frame for this video, let's quickly add our indicators to enable us to better understand how this strategy works. So bring up the indicator panel, and I want you to search for the no sure thing, this one right here under technical options, as this indicator was made by TradingView. The no sure thing indicator is a momentum based oscillator. No sure thing is based on rate of change. No sure thing takes for different time frames and smooths them out using simple moving averages. And the indicator then calculates a final value that fluctuates between positive and negative values above and below zero line. Okay, so let's adjust the settings for this indicator. So first we'll be adding our first and line to this indicator. Bring up the settings and we will change this to figure one. Go over to style and change this to green. And that will be all for this first band line. Now add a second band line to this indicator. Double click on it to bring up the indicator settings. Now go to the coordinates and change this to minus one. Then move over to the style and change it to rate. And that would be all. Now click on the OK button. Now double click on the no sure thing indicator or go to the settings tab. On the style, we would be changing the zero option to white for better visualization. Then lastly, I will be changing this to a straight join line and not a dashed line. So that will be all for this indicator. Now to add our second indicator to the chart, we'll be attaching the indicator to this no sure thing to better get moments of overbought and oversold levels when trading. So to do that, when you hover over the no sure thing indicator, click on these three dots that indicate more. Next, I want you to click on the indicator strategies on the no sure thing indicator. When you click on it, then I want you to search for the MACD indicator. That is the moving average convergence divergence this one right here also made by TradingView, as it is in the technical section. Click on it to edit to the charts. Now we could notice that the MACD reading is coming from the no sure thing indicator. So, this means that the settings that were applied to the no sure thing is the source settings for the MACD settings as you can see, that the areas of highs and lows are the same as the settings. So this is not just the default settings of the MACD. So make sure if you want to add the MACD to the chart, you use it through the no sure thing more tab that is being shown at this part of the screen. Now that's not all, as we would also be adding a band line to the MACD indicator to better filter out trade, entries and exit. So we would add our lower band line to the chat, double click on it, go to the coordinates, and settings I will be using for this is minus 0.3. Then on the style of this line, I will be leaving this as red, as it will be used as the negative band line below the MACD so click on the OK button when you are done. Now, add your second band line to the indicator, double click on it, go back to the coordinates and change this to 0.3. Now on the style of this, I will be changing this to green as it will be serving as our upper band line. Click on the OK button, and we are set with our indicators. Now we will have to add one last indicator to the chart, and this indicator is what will be giving us signals on the chart to determine when we have to enter trades, as well as exit trades on the chart. And for this indicator, I want you to bring up the indicator panel, then search for the zigzag trend divergence, this one right here by he who must not be named. This indicator has achieved an editor's pick, so be rest assured that it does not repaint and it will be making us money on the financial market. And if we go over the description for this indicator, we can notice that this zigzag trend divergence detects divergence on the chart. But don't get worried, as we would still have to filter the indicators to better get what we would be needing, as we only need to see that hidden divergence on the chart in order to take trades. So what do we do with this indicator? Right here it says that pullbacks are always the hardest part of the trade, and when it happens, we struggle to make decisions on whether to continue the trade and wait for recovery or cut losses. Similarly, when an instrument is trending well, it is often difficult decision to make if we want to take some profit off the table. This indicator is aimed to make these decisions easier by providing a combined opinion of sentiment based on trend and possible divergence. Okay, now this helps to identify divergences as you already know what the strategy is all about. 
so we are trying to identify trend continuation. So we make sure we take into account the no sure thing indicator together with the MACD to identify points of entry on the chart. So before that, let us first adjust the settings for this zigzag trend divergence to better understand how we take trades. So when we bring up the settings panel, we'll go back to the input. I want you to scroll down to these points and uncheck the continuation, uncheck the indeterminate, uncheck the divergence, and then make use of the hidden divergences as this will be our signal. Provider for buying and selling commodities in the market. Now move over to style and uncheck the bar color and super trend. And that is all. Then the last thing I want you to uncheck is the table, as we won't be needing that either on the chart. Then click on the OK button. Now, our chart is fully ready and the question remains, how do we buy or sell in the market? Make sure you watch till the end if you really want to make profits trading the Forex, crypto and stocks market. First off, I want you guys to know that we removed the zero line from the no sure thing indicator, as well as the histogram on the MACD so we don't get to keep a busy chart. Okay traders, now for a buy signal to be valid. First, we would want to see our KSD indicator close above the upper band line. And as well, we would like to see our MACD indicator close above the upper band line too. When both of our indicators close above the overbought area as indicated by our green band lines, it indicates we are in a strong upward momentum in the market. So let's wait till we get our KSD and MACD above our upper band line. Now we could see we got valid entries at this point, as both of our indicators are now above the upper band line. And please take note that we cannot take any trade not until we see the hidden divergence signal, as it will be indicated using the letter H. So I still don't know why the zigzag trend divergence is giving out these types of signals, even though we turned them off, as this is a continuation signal. But what we are looking for is the hidden divergence signal from the zigzag indicator, so we'll be looking out for an H letter signal, so this is termed not a valid signal. Now we've met our conditions here, so we will take the next hidden divergence signal if and only when our KSD indicator, as well as the MACD indicator, does not close below the oversold area. So let's wait on our valid signal before we enter trade. Now, we could notice we got our signal at this candlestick, but before we enter trade, this is what we do. When we have our signal, we wait for the next two candlesticks to confirm that this signal entry is valid. Now it doesn't matter if the MACD or the no sure thing is still above the upper band line. As long as from the point we got our first overbought closed areas, we could notice that the MACD and the no sure thing indicator did not close below the lower band line. So this indicates a valid entry signal. Now we would wait for the next to candlestick after our hidden divergence signal, as this gives us a solid affirmation that the signal is here to stay. Speaking of our stop loss levels, I wouldn't recommend using the recent swin low for a level of stop loss. So find a good indicator that could give you a good level of stop loss when entering trades. So let's see. If we entered this trade at this point of the next to candlestick after we got our signal, remember we do not use the lower swing low for our stop loss. So try and get a good stop loss indicator for this. A good ATR stop loss or chandelier exit indicator could do the trick for good stop loss levels. So let's see how this trade would have performed if we were to get involved in this. And if we assume that for this trade, we take two times what we risked in the market for it. Then boom, we see we successfully made two times what we risked in the market. I hope you understand how we open trades here, but if you don't, do not worry. Let's go over some more examples to make you better understand how this works. Please, if you are enjoying our videos, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel as it motivates us on the hunt for the holy grail. Moving on. Exactly the opposite is true for a short trade, so for a short signal to be valid. First, we want to see our KST and the MACD moving average cross below the lower band line as this indicates that there is enough bearish momentum in the market. Now we could notice that we got our conditions met at this point. So next, we would now wait for our bearish hidden divergence from our zigzag trend indicator before we enter our trades. So we notice we got our divergence signal at this point from the last point to where we got our MACD and the no sure thing indicator below the lower band line. And like I said earlier, it doesn't matter if the KSDN MACD indicator 
is no longer below the lower band level, as long as they did not test the upper band level. So this tends to be a valid entry. And again, we got our to candle stick after our signal was triggered. Now remember I said earlier that we do not use the recent swing high for stop loss because using recent swing high will take you out of trade as price gets triggered close to those levels of swing high. Although most of the time, you will not get stopped out, but I do not recommend making use of it when using this strategy. Now let's see how the trade performed. Notice we had a good price swing in our favor, and we would have made two times what we risked in the market. But since we are following the trend, I recommend using at least 1.2 times what we risked in the market. And for chances of increasing your overall win rate, I recommend using 1.5 times what was risked in the market. So let's go over one more example before we round up the video for today. So here again, we see we got a valid entry to go long here, but this is not where our conditions were met. If we move a little bit backwards, we'll see we've got a valid condition met here, as both of our indicators crossed above the upper band level, but none of them tested the oversold area before we got our hidden divergence signal at this point. So if we were to take Trey at this candlestick, we experienced a good volume of price action in the direction of our Trey that would have triggered a two times level of take profit. So make sure you take this seriously if you want to become a profitable trader trading the Forex, crypto and stocks market. And do not forget, what makes a trader is how hungry you tend to be when making those pips. So do the proper back testing and forward testing before trading live. And that's it for today's video traders. Thanks for watching and see you on to the next one.